This is Dr. Andrew Young at St. John's in Santa Monica, and we're going to take a few moments to talk about total hip replacement, specifically how we use the computer to help us determine the optimal size and positioning of the femoral stem. We made a lot of technical videos in the past. This is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be as simple as possible to give the broadest overview of how we use this technology to achieve symmetry and balance. So planning starts from the very beginning. This is an x-ray. It's a very good diagnostic x-ray brought into our office. And it helps us clearly to see the problem in the right hip. We see a complete loss of joint space with a collapse of the femoral head. This is what we call bone on bone. But it's not ideal for surgical planning. We're only seeing three quarters of the pelvis. We're missing the entire left side. The pelvis is oblique and it's also rotated. So again, very good x-ray for determining the diagnosis, but not the best x-ray for surgical planning. I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so a lot of this is the very technical work to ensure that we have the most accurate starting assessment of the deformity. So we place the patient on the back and then we make sure that we have a level pelvis. And we can determine that by making sure that landmarks on the pelvis on the left side are equal in size and shape to the opposite side. And this is pretty close. We can see the pelvis is no longer slanted, it's horizontal, but there's still some rotational issues. And also we look at the position of the leg. This femur is straight down, this one is coming in. So we need to do a little bit more refinement before we begin surgical planning. After we made a few more attempts, we can see we now have a level pelvis. We have symmetry on the right half and the left half of the pelvis. And then we can also see the femur on both sides in a neutral position with the same rotation. So this is a very good starting point. And from this, we can get an accurate assessment of our baseline disease. And then we'll have an understanding of what we need to do to correct the deformity. Okay, and then now this is the interesting part. We take that image that is perfectly balanced and then we download it into our computer guidance system. And we can begin to take very quantitative and precise measurements. We'll draw a horizontal line across the base of the pelvis at the same landmark on the right and the left side. And then we'll look at the length of the femur based on a landmark of the femur. This is called the superior pole of the lesser trochanter. And from this, we can see we have about 20 millimeters of length on the left and 11 millimeters of length on the disease size. And of course, that's because this hip has collapsed. This right side is shorter. And the computer tells us it's actually 8.4 millimeters shorter. So that's our starting deformity. That's the amount of length we need to correct. Okay, now that we know we need to correct about an eight millimeter discrepancy, we'll then switch to sizing the femoral stem into the femur of the patient. So this is a template. It's a computer generated overlay of the intended implant over the femur. And we're looking at three main parameters. One is alignment, two is neck geometry, and then three is fit and fill. So the first one is alignment we want to make sure that this stem is aligned neutrally down the shaft of the canal. Secondly, we're looking at neck geometry. This is the angle between the shaft of the femur and the neck. And this distance helps us reproduce the correct amount of offset or displacement between the femur and the pelvis. And the third thing we do on this image is determine sizing. We look at the proximal area or the upper half of the stem to make sure that it fits appropriately. Now that we know the size, the alignment, and the neck geometry, we'll then look at the other hip in the next slide to determine where we place the stem to correct that eight millimeter discrepancy. Now that we have identified the appropriate size, the appropriate alignment, and the appropriate neck geometry, we will then overlay that image. We'll transfer it to the opposite side 
so we can create exact symmetry between the two hips and thereby correct the leg length discrepancy. Once we position this implant on the healthy opposite side, we will know the appropriate landmarks. We'll know the distance between this point here, which is called the lesser trochanter, to the femoral neck, and we'll also know this point from the lesser troch to this line in the femoral head. We can use these two measurements to very precisely position the femoral stem to correct the original deformity. Now that we've done that, we can compare the two sides and we can see by using those landmarks, we have virtually corrected the deformity even prior to surgery. Now the goal of surgery will then be to reproduce this preoperative plan. And this is a critical, very important confirmatory x-ray. And I'll just orient you. So here we have the pelvis. And this image is taken with our fluoroscopic system. And this image has then been downloaded into our computer guidance system. So now that we have our image, we have the appropriate symmetry or balance between the two sides, the appropriate angulation and rotation, we will begin taking our measurements. We will draw horizontal lines across common landmarks to ensure that we have a level pelvis. On the right side, which is the hip that we've corrected, we can see we have our socket or our new acetabulum in place. This is the femoral stem. This is the neck geometry we have chosen. And by using this combination of components, we can see that we have now reproduced the length that we had targeted. Very specifically, on the healthy left side, we have 20.2 millimeters. And now using this combination of implants, we have 20.2 millimeters of height. So we have corrected all the original deformity at this time. The purpose of our discussion today was to go over a very basic overview of how we use computer guidance and fluoroscopy to determine the optimal position of the femoral stem. But if for those of you who are interested in the technical details, we go into significant depth in our publication in the Journal of Hip Surgery entitled A Novel Measurement Using Digital Radiography to Minimize Fluoroscopy in Total Hip Replacement. And this paper details how we use these techniques to very accurately reproduce leg length and correct pre-existing deformities. We have our final confirmation of the accuracy of our reconstruction with the post-operative x-ray. So once again, we have a level pelvis. This pelvis is in a neutral position. It's balanced. We look at our acetabulum in the appropriate position and angulation. We look at our femoral stem with a neutral alignment down the shaft appropriate size, and the next shaft angle or geometry that reproduces the distance between the femur and the pelvis. And we can see we've restored all the landmarks we had hoped to correct preoperatively. And then if we look back from the beginning of how we chose a femoral stem, we can see the diseased femoral stem or the diseased femur with the collapsed femoral head. And we can see how we use image digital radiography, as well as computer templating to determine alignment, sizing, neck geometry, and height. And then we have our final image that demonstrates our correction has been achieved with our intended implants. So we hope that was informative and answered questions related to femoral stem positioning and some of the hardware and software that we use in surgery to balance the hip replacement. And it's been our pleasure to share this type of information. We found that the more patients know, the better questions they ask, and the better they do in surgery and in recovery. Be well.